Lord, we chant your praise. We chant your praise. We chant your praise for the victory of the cross. We chant your praise for the excellency of your grace. We chant your praise for the superlatives of your mercy. The Bible says that you are plenteous, plenteous in mercies, mercies, mercies. Your mercies, they never fail. Lord, we chant your praise because of the benevolence of your face. We chant your praise because of the countenance of your light. In your light, indeed, we see light. You show us the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. We chant your praise. Because you are the one that leads us from glory to glory, from victory unto victory, from grace to grace, from power to power, from conquest to conquest. We chant your praise. We chant your praise for the triumph of your mercies over the billowing tide of our culpability and of our sins. We chant your praise. Oh, we chant the praise of the one that was alive and was dead. And behold, he is alive forevermore. And he holds the keys of hell and of death. We chant your praise. We chant your praise because of the wonder of wonders. We chant your praise because of the wonder of grace. We chant your praise because of the profundity of your disclosures. We chant your praise. Oh, the men that went before us, when they looked, when they pried into the sublimities of your dealings with man, they wondered, what is man that you are mindful of him? We chant your praise because you are mindful of us. We chant your praise, our conquering king the one that leads us from victory unto victory we chant your praise we chant your praise we chant your praise we chant your praise the one in whose light we are transformed. We chant your praise. The one by whose breath we are sustained. We chant your praise. The one in whose arms our times are written. We chant your praise. We chant your praise because of the victory parade of the spirit. We chant your praise. Because of the holy convocation of grace, we chant your praise. The fathers before us say, praise him for his mercies. To our fathers in distress, in distress, praise him still the same forever. Slow to chide and swift to bless. We chant your praise. We chant your praise. We chant your praise. The one who knows us more than we know ourselves with all of the baggage and the deficiencies and the insecurities and the insufficiencies and the weaknesses and the infirmities. Yet, he loves us. We chant your praise. We chant your praise. You are the one that delivered us from the mouth of the lion. We chant your praise. None of us would be here today were it not for your loving kindness. We chant your praise. Mm. No wonder the, Psalms, the psalmist says to sing unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. We chant your praise. We give you praise and glory. Lord, we declare uh, with the words of the psalmist that the Lord is glorious in battle. You are gone forth. You have gone forth, conquering and to conquer. And we take our place behind you as you lead the procession. We chant your praise. We chant your praise. We chant your praise. The monarch, we chant your praise. Our conqueror, we chant your praise. Beloved, in whom we have been accepted, we chant your praise. Hallowed be your name, our King. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Oh, I can't hear you. I said in the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Somebody shout! I can't.
can't hear you. I say, somebody shout. Is that the voice of triumph? Somebody shout. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I wanted to wave that hand and say something beautiful to Jesus tonight. Glory to God. Oh, clap your hands, oh ye people. Oh. Yes. He has done great things. He has done great things. He has done great things. Blessed be his holy name. Father, we thank you because indeed thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever in the name of Jesus. You may be seated briefly, 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 briefly. Hallelujah. I want to welcome you to, on behalf of the Abuja Pastor, I want to welcome you to this month's edition of Abuja Word Count. And we are excited because of the great things that God is doing here already. If you have eyes to see, if you have ears to hear, you can see already and you can hear already. The Lord, the shout of the king is in the midst of his people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And there are many things with which men and women came into this place this evening that the Lord will take away, take over from men and women before they leave. I want to appreciate everyone that has um, made the time to be here today. We have, you can see so many faces, friends uh, from different uh, places, and I uh, want to particularly appreciate Minister Theophilus Sunday. Uh, please, can you? I said to appreciate Minister Theophilus Sunday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, we thank God for the gift that he is. We thank God for bringing him to us and to the team that came with him. Um, some of them were on the instrument, some of them with the microphone, and some of them are here. Let's make them all welcome. <laughs> you are welcome. You are welcome. Hallelujah. All right, I want to read a few passages of scripture, and then we will um, trust the Lord to stir up the waters again. Amen. Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14 and verse 14. The Bible says in Matthew 14 and verse 14. And Jesus, Jesus went, went forth and, and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them and he healed their sick. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them and he healed their sick. Now, there are many reasons why God heals. This is one of them. One of the reasons why God heals is as an expression of his compassion. It's a token of God's compassion. God heals because God is compassionate. God heals because God is compassionate. Because it's not just enough to have the power to heal. There must be a motivation. There must be a motivation to do so. And one of the motivations that propel God to activate or to utilize his power in the direction of the removal of diseases and infirmities from the bodies of people is compassion. There are different reasons, many reasons why God heals. This is one. And 
This is very important because, because of the nature of God, the nature of God that we all know enough. If you believe in God at all, if you have anything remotely close to a good conception of what God is, you will know that God is changeless. He does not change. All right? And so if God is a compassionate God, and the compassion of God usually would move God to heal, it wouldn't matter in what milieu you live, what context, what civilization you exist within, God by the requirement of the consistency of his nature will be God. And because he will always be God, he is compassionate. And one of the manifestations of his compassion is that he heals. Compassion moves God to heal the sick. Hallelujah. Now, when Jesus came into the world and he began his ministry, healing was one of the very prominent aspects of the ministry of Jesus. And sometimes people would say to you that, okay, you know, the reason Jesus was healing was because he needed to inaugurate the kingdom. He was the Lord. It was the messianic uh, uh, component of the ministry that was prophesied in the Old Testament that he had to heal. And that uh, it was also because the Bible was not yet written at the time, so we needed to have a strong testimonial to the effect of the credibility of the ministry of Jesus and the apostles after him. And they would go as far as to say, now that we have the Bible, the healing ministries are no longer necessary. Let's even assume that the basis upon which that statement originally is made is correct. That's not the only reason why Jesus heals. That's not the only reason why God heals. One of the reasons God heals, like we've seen here, is compassion. So that the canonicity of scripture it has nothing on this point here. Whether the Bible has been fully written or hasn't been fully written, if God heals because God is compassionate, God will heal because God is compassionate. And until God stops being compassionate, God will not stop healing. Yes, sir. Are you with me? Yes, it, it, until God stops being compassionate, God will not stop healing. So compassion moved Jesus to heal. It is, it is one of the demonstrations that God is not unaware and that God is not uninvolved and that God is not untouched. The Bible says in Hebrews that we do not have a high priest that cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. He can be touched. Jesus does not just know mentally. All right? It, it, Jesus' relationship to... Jesus' relationship to your condition, it's not just epistemological. It's not just like, oh yeah, Jesus knows that you feel pain. All right? But the Bible says he is touched with the feeling of your infirmity. Jesus is, is such a being that when you're going through trouble and he says, I understand, he means it. Not just I am aware. I understand. He can be touched with the feeling of your infirmity. And so, because of the bowels, if I may use that word, because of his bowels of mercy and compassion and tenderness, he is moved to heal. If you are still here, say amen. amen. Okay. Mark chapter 2, a second reading. Mark chapter 2. The Bible says from verse 1, that again he entered into Capernaum and after some, some days, days and, and it was noised that, that he was, was in the house. house. Glory, Glory to God. God. Jesus, Jesus is, is in the house. house. He's, He's in the house. house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, again, and again he entered, he entered into Capernaum, Capernaum after, after some, some days and it, and it was noised that he was in the house. house. Jesus. Jesus. He's in, he's the, in the house, house and he's, and he's in, in the, the house, house again. again. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, and straightway many, many were gathered, gathered together, together in so much that there was, there was not, not there, was there was no room, room to receive them, them. No, no, not, not so, so much as about, about the door. door. And, he and he preached, preached the, the word, word unto them. 
and, and they come unto him. This verse is very important for me tonight. And they, and they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. Now, now this is King, King James, so the language, the language is a little bit antiquated. Uh, uh, they, when, the when, the when the Bible talks about coming, coming unto him and bringing one sick of the palsy, that, that is, is simply somebody that is invalid. It's a paralyzed person. That's, they brought to him a paralytic. This person is paralyzed. And the Bible says he was born or carried by four people. The reason, the reason I, I said this verse and, and the verse, verse after it is important is because, because of the occurrence of a word. word. That, that word, word is the word come. C-O-M-E. The Bible, the Bible says, says, and they, they come, come unto, unto him. him. They, they come, come unto, unto him. him. The, the next, next verse says, is, the, the next verse. verse. So, so look, look at, at verse 3. And, and they come unto him. him. The, the next, next verse says, says and when, when they could not come my unto him. So, so there is, is coming and there is coming. coming. Verse 3 indicates, indicates that they, they came. came. And, and if, if that, that was, was all you read, read you would have thought mission successful. But then the very next verse told us that even though they came, they couldn't come close enough. As if to say, say that, that there is, is a, a, a certain diameter. diameter. There's, there's a force field. field. There's, there's a, a circumference, circumference of, of effect, effect within which these people needed to enter in order to be able to receive of the fountain of the compassion of Jesus. And even though they are at a place that is way, way closer to Jesus than where they were in the morning. They had gone far, but they had not gone far enough. They come unto him, but they could not come nigh unto him. And this evening, I'd like for you to know that there are certain things Jesus wants to do at close range. You know, if you understand, if you, if you know the ministry of Jesus, you'd realize that uh, Jesus used to post healings yes. to people in different places. Remember that man that came to him and he says, go home, your child is healed. And he took the man almost a full day to get back home. When he got home and said, at what time did he begin to amend? They said it was about three o'clock yesterday. The man realized that that was exactly the moment when Jesus said to him that the child was healed, the Bible says, and he believed. Hallelujah. Amen. So, Jesus Christ has no problem healing from anywhere. That's the same reason why till today we pray for people over the phone and they get healed. All right? People join online and they are thousands of kilometers away and they get healed. So that geographically speaking, there's a sense in which you really don't need to be geographically close in order to receive healing from Jesus. But because God wants to impress upon us that there are certain activities of the spirit that cannot be done from a far distance, this story is situated in scripture for us. So in this story, we realize that even though they come to Jesus, in the language of the KJV, the Bible tells us, they could not come nigh. That means they couldn't come near. And it is the case that this is supposed to be a model for us that certain activities that need to happen between us and Jesus must happen in the immediacy of his presence. There are things that God does not want to do for you from a distance so that the problem is not the power to do it. The problem is that there's an intervening gap between you and the Lord that you must bridge. And the moment you bridge it, you would have now entered into the sphere where the activities of God will be potent. Because God has decided that certain things cannot be done from a distance. Whatever happens tonight, I'd like to say to you first and foremost that Jesus wants to ensure that there is no gap between your soul and his very self. Healing is a list of your problems. God can heal you from anywhere. Can send healing to meet you wherever you are. But then there's an interaction that Jesus wants to have with you. 
And if you're under the sound of my voice and in, in the words of that song that we used to sing, I've wandered far away from God, but now I'm coming home. The path of sin, too long I trod. Lord, I'm coming home. Some persons need to make that homecoming tonight. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. Some persons are just going through the motions, the motions of Christianity. Some people have lost vitality. Some persons have lost connection, connection. The connection between them and Jesus is suffered, suffered so badly that many people don't even know how to look up to him and come back. You know that kind of thing? You know, there's a way that you would have... Um, Allow the distance between yourself and somebody for too long that when you now want to come back, it becomes very difficult to even know how to initiate the return. And if by the generosity of their own disposition, they now decide to call you, when you see the call, you wouldn't even know what to do. You pick up your phone like, oh my God. Ah, 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 like... What would be the first thing I will say if I pick this call? The reason is because you know that you have left, you have left that relationship unattended for too long, so much that it is unacceptable. But you see, whereas I can understand the sentiment and that feeling is very, very natural and it's a very human thing, Apart from understanding that we feel so, I'd like for you to know that this is where it ends. Even though that is the way we feel, I'd like for you to know that that is not the solution to the problem. Every day that you don't make it up, you are widening the gap. Hello? So if it takes you another two weeks, you are planning of how do I call? What do I say when I call? How do I go about it? If, if, today is still a better day to call than tomorrow. If it's bad today, it's not going to be better tomorrow. If you don't do something about it today, are you with me? Are you with me? And I want you to understand that God is not waiting for you to put your life together before you can come to him. God does not. The, the real issue is God wants you to come to him so that he can put your life together. Yes. I was preaching in Jaws about the weekend, yesterday, actually. And I was saying to them that, when God made a covenant with Abraham, God, surprisingly, was the only one that performed the covenanting act of going between the bodies of the caught animal. And the implication was God was saying to Abraham, all right, if I don't keep the terms of this covenant, let it happen to me like it had happened to these animals. That is to say, God was saying, if I don't keep my promise, let me die. God was saying that it will be easier for me to die than the words I've spoken to you now to not come to pass. It's worse than that. Hello? God, God was saying that as impossible as it is for me to die, it is more impossible. If there is such a, a category, it is more impossible for this promise to not come to pass. Meanwhile, you know that in every covenant there are two sides to it. There are, there are two sides to every covenant. A covenant is like, in those contexts, is like what we call bilateral arrangements today that exist between nations. So what God now said, listen to me, listen to me. I'm going somewhere. As if that was not serious enough, God was implying to Abraham that I am taking responsibility for my part in this covenant arrangement and I'm also taking responsibility for your part. That means I will do my part and I will do your part. Hello? Hello? Now, it's like you are trying to enter into an agreement with God. And there are terms and conditions. You need to do this. I need to do this. You need to do this. I need to do this. Then in the end, God now said, all my part, I will do it. All your part, I will also do it. This is why it is such 
and is, is a horrible, offensive, I have no words for the measure of insult that it is to God when a man turns his back on God on account of a moral deficiency in his life. Whoever told you from the start that you were going to run it by your strength? In the New Testament, it is captured as God is the one at work in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. That is to say, the strength and the energy by which we do our part of the covenant is sourced and secured and supplied from and by God. That means, so I was telling them in justice, like, it's like somebody gave you money. You owe somebody. Somebody gave you money so that you can pay him the debt you owe. And then when you brought it, he now paid you for paying him. That's how, that's how outrageous this thing is. Because after you've done all that, Jesus will now still give you reward. They will give you reward for doing things you did by grace that he gave. Huh? That's like somebody gave you money to help him go and buy a fridge. When you went, you bought the fridge and you brought it. Then you now say, how much is this fridge again? And I said, it's uh, 360K. Then the person now gives you 400,000. Say, 360K is for the fridge and then the remaining balance is uh, for your fuel. You're like, but sir, you were the one that wired the money to me that I used to buy the fridge. He said, yes, but God is generous like that. In the face of such a God, how does it make sense that you are trying to run away from him because you don't think you are living right? Where, where do you think the power to live right is going to come from? So I, I also ask them, so when you turn your back on God, how are you ever going to get better? While you are trying to walk with the Lord, you, you are misbehaving. How is not working with the Lord the solution to your problem? If you are misbehaving while you are working with the Lord, when you stop working with him, is that when you will now start behaving? It, that is the question of eternity. Lord, to whom shall we go? So when the songwriter says, I've searched all over and I couldn't find nobody. I've searched high and low couldn't find nobody. I wanted to know that it is true. The search is over. <laughs> they say, weep not. Weep not! Because there was, the, 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 the weeping was on account of the fact that nobody was found worthy to break the seal and to read the book. But I wanted to know that the search is over. The answer to the dilemma, the answer to the problem, the answer to the fracture, the answer to the corruption that is invested in our nature has been found. And his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. I want you to know tonight that, when, you know, when Jesus was announcing the new covenant in the book of Jeremiah, he said to them, the next covenant, I'm, the covenant I'm going to make with the house of Judah and Israel will not be like the former one that they did not keep, even though I was faithful to them. He said, but this is the one I will make with them. He says, I will put my law in their heart and I will write it on their mind. And I will be their God and they will be my people. Almost everything was reversed from what it was in the first arrangement. In the first arrangement, it was written on, tab on tablets of stone. It's what I call a notice board arrangement. If you've been to school before, you used to have notice boards in the days when we still use hard copy. I know these days they use WhatsApp and whatever else. But in those days, there used to be a physical board where they put notices. You read. The idea is be advised accordingly. If they say school fee has been increased, well, you have been informed. Be advised accordingly. The thing told you what to do, but it did not enable you to do it. Meanwhile, because it already told you what to do, you are now culpable. You can no longer plead ignorance. You know? You can't say I was not aware. 
And in the language of the New Testament, the, the law was not advised. The Bible said the law was given. Hello? So when, when Jesus was going to come, he said, the one I'm going to bring, I will not write it on tables of stone. I will internalize it. I will personalize it. Literally speaking, it meant to say, I will incarnate it. I will put my laws in their heart and I will write it on their mind so that the nature of God will become native to your intuitions from within. It empowers you. The word of God enters into you. And like the prophet said, he said, and the spirit entered into me when he spake these words unto me and set me upon my feet. The word of God that is quick and powerful. It now enters into you. It's no more on tablets of stone. And wherever the word of the king is, there is power. So he says, I will write it in their heart. I'll write it in, I'll put it in their heart and write it on their mind. And then he said, and I will be their God. And they will be my people. So this also is reversed. In the old arrangement, they will be my people. And I will be their God. In the new arrangement, I will be their God. And then they will be my people. So that in the new arrangement, you are not under probation. You don't understand. God does not say, if you behave well, after a while, I, I just keep watching you first. If you behave well, then I'll accept you. If you can be my people, then I will be your God. In the old, that was how it was. They read it and said, if you keep to the terms of this covenant, then you will be my people and I will be your God. In the new, he says, I will be your God first. Then I will now help you, literally, to become my people. I'm trying to say to you that there is never a good reason to turn your back on Jesus. If you are still here, say amen. amen. My, my own search has come to an end. Huh? Live or die. In Nigerian English, we die here. Live, we live here. Die, we die here. I'm with Peter. Lord, to whom shall we go? There is no better neighbor anywhere. I found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. The hymn writer says, there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Uh, there is no competition. Because there is no religion anywhere to be compared with this our own. There's nothing that comes remotely close to what we have. There's no other God who lives and never ever die. There is no. There is no other God. There is no other God who lives and never ever dies. There is no other God who never dies. All the other ones are dead. People go to their tomb huh? <laughs> for pilgrimage. When you come to our own, it's empty. It's empty. For death could not hold him captive. Even in the grave, Jesus is Lord. For death could not hold him captive, even in the grave. Jesus is Lord. So, so my question is, is there anything else? No, talk to me. The debate is over. Are you with me? The debate is over. Even, even the average Nigerian on the road says, follow who no road. <laughs> huh? the, the average Nigerian on the road says, follow who no road. And then our own savior, he didn't just say, I know the way. He said, I am. I am the way. Excuse me, this, this debate is over. 
It's over. I need no other argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. My faith has found a resting place. Not in device nor creed. I trust the ever living one. His wounds for me shall bleed. I'd like for you to know that the debate is over. It's over. It's over. If you have met Jesus, you have come to the end of your search. Are you with me? You have come to the end of your search. It's over. It ends here. Jesus has no competitor. There's no rival. And he says, he says to not fear. He says to not be dismayed. He says, I will help you. He says, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. The other songwriter says, I fear no fall with thee at hand to bless. Death has no sting and grave no bitterness. Where is death sting and grave thy victory? I triumph still if thou abide with me. The presence of Jesus is the greatest asset that you can have in your life. Are you with me? So whatever happened to you this evening, the, the issue is that if there is a gap between your soul and the Savior, Jesus wants you to bridge the gap. Are you there? Did you hear me? Jesus wants you to bridge the gap. He wants you to bridge the gap. Jesus does not want to have a, a long distance relationship with you. Zoom is not good enough. Are you there? Video calls are not enough. Jesus wants you to be in the here, in the present, in the presence, in the immediate presence of his person. So even though they had made a lot of effort, so at the time that they were still trying to find how to come near, if you went to the guy's house and say, and say, where is Bana? Let's assume the man's name is Bana, the paralyzed man. Barnabas, so let's just say Barnab. So when you come, I say, where is Barnab? They say, ah, Barnab has gone to Jesus. They've taken him to Jesus. And it is not exactly a lie, but it's not completely the truth. Because even though they come, they could not come nigh. But at that point, while they were looking for a way to let him down, Barnab was better than those that had not even started the journey at all. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but I, I, tonight is a homecoming for a number of people. There are people that Christianity has fossilized into a dead thing, a religion. It had fossilized into a routine. It's become a social context, a, a social component of your life. Where else do we go on Sunday morning? Where else? So I don't want people to be asking me, we didn't see you, we didn't see you, we didn't see you. Maybe that's why you are here. But I need you to know that Jesus is looking for something more. Jesus is not looking for token participation. Jesus is wanting to have an organic, a real relationship with you that is not carried on from a distance. They come, but they could not come nigh. And the, the point of that story eventually is to say to you that whatever happens, find God. Yes, Are you there? Yes, whatever happens, don't go home until you find him. And let me tell you the assurance of heaven. Heaven says you will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. God is not missing, but you will never find him until you seek him. 
It's not missing, it's not lost. <laughs> but Paul said, if happily they might fail after him and seek him and find him, even though he is not far from every one of us. For in him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. God is not missing, but you will never find him until you seek him. You shall seek me and you shall find me when you shall seek me with all your heart. And if you bring all your heart, it means you met the criteria for finding God. It's as simple as that. The moment your search is with all your heart, it, it will just be available. Then you will now know not just the nearness of God, you will know the nearness of God. The Lord is in this place. You can now join the rank of the fathers that went ahead of us, that did business in the luminous presence of his majesty, that could say like the man, the prophet, eclectic as he was, Elijah, as, the, as long as the Lord God liveth before whom I stand. Before whom I stand. He carried such a consciousness of his locatedness in God's presence that even when he stood before the king of the land, the king of the land simply vaporized into his audience. The king actually vaporized into a spectator. He said, as long as the Lord God liveth, before whom I stand. You know, normally you say, mind your words, you are before the king. He said, no, I'm not before the king. I'm before his king. Because I'm before the king of kings. Meanwhile, this interaction happened in the middle of nowhere. The man, he was a mobile facility in the spirit. Where Elijah was somewhere and he said, as long as the Lord God live before whom I stand, not before whom I stood. I stand. Even now that I'm talking to Ahab, it's not before Ahab, it's before the Lord that I stand. That's why the fathers said, I have desired him more than my necessary meat. Listen to me, people of God. Listen to me, people of God. There is a search. There is a search that will never end until you lay hold on God. And it's the reason why many of us are going from one thing to the other and some of us are falling into addictions. And I want to say to you tonight that the thing you are looking for is God. And until you find him, you will not come to the end of that search. And if you are in this hall tonight, we can agree that you came. The next step that you must take is to come nigh. Having come this far, we can't deny that you came. But I'm trying to ask you to take the next step. And that next step is in the spirit. It's no longer in the physical. You've, you've, you've covered the physical geographical distance. The only distance that remains is spiritual in nature. To come nigh. And that coming nigh is with a heart that is broken and contrite. Because unto such a man will God look. Without excuse. The songwriter says, nothing in my hands I bring. Simply to your cross I cling. Naked, I look to you for dress. Helpless, I look to you for grace. Foul, I to the fountain fly. Wash me, Savior, or I die. Nothing in my hands I bring. Simply to your cross I cling. That is a cry of a man who will find God. It, 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 an adventure will begin for many people today. An adventure. An adventure that will not end until you stand before him in the glorious liberty of his presence. On that bright and beautiful morning, an adventure that will not end till that day will begin for many people tonight. Tonight will be the night that you begin a journey of no return. You know, I love, I love the hymns. The other one says, when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, when the eternal morning shall break bright and fair and the saints of God shall gather over on the other side and the roll is called up yonder, I will be there. 
that a journey begins tonight that will culminate in you being there when the role is called up yonder because a day will break over which the sun will never set is that eternal morning a day will break over which the sun will never set it's a perpetual day it's an eternal day and the songwriter says when that bright morning when that eternal morning breaks, bright and fair, and the saints of God gather over on the other side, and the roll is called. Don't let it be lost on you. It's roll call. That's what the song we say, roll call. That thing they used to do back in the day in secondary school and primary school. In the morning, just to be sure who came and who is not present. We roll call. And the roll is called up yonder. I will be there. Your name can be in the church register. You may have gone through the new convert class and you are a registered member of the church. But that will not matter anything if your name is not in this role. And I'm saying that would to God that a journey begins between you and the Lord. A relationship, something begins between you and Jesus that will not end until that day that the role will be called and you will be there. And you'll be there. And you'll be there. And you will be there. When the saints shall make up his, when the Lord shall make up his jewels, when the bright crowns of rejoicing are worn, then shall his weary and faithful disciples all be remembered for what they have done. A day breaks. A day breaks. And I'm, I'm putting you on notice tonight that if, if you came to Jesus, you have come to the end of your search. There's nothing else to experiment anywhere else. Are you with me? There's nothing else to experiment anywhere else. Jesus proved with finality that he's the end of the search of the quest of men that are looking for God. If you have found Jesus, you have found everything you need in life. I don't know if we still sing it, but we used to sing it. He's enough for me. The man of Calvary, he's enough. Those that truly submit to him find him to be enough. They come, but they could not come nigh. And that gap is a gap I am beseeching you to bridge tonight. If you are still here, say amen. And, and so when they couldn't come nigh, they found a way to come nigh. Took off the roof, broke the ceiling. Oh, I have two minutes left before we start praying. Took off the roof, broke the ceiling, and they let the man down on the bed. And the Bible says, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the sick of the palsy, Son, your sins are forgiven you. I know this was a little bit disappointed for the four people that brought him because what was on those people's list, what was their concern, their agenda, was not sin, it was sickness. This man was sick. That was why they brought him to Jesus. If I'm not sure, sin would have crossed their mind. Uh, how much sin can a paralyzed man commit? <laughs> this man that cannot even eat food if you don't put it in his mouth. Even bodily functions. The man cannot ease himself if you don't carry him. How much sin can this man commit? That Jesus saw the man saying, son, your sin, your sin. Who? How are you seeing sin here, Jesus? How are you seeing sin here? And just in context, I want you to know that sometimes it is sin that is not allowing Jesus to see your sickness. It might just be. Because it was as if Jesus had to roll away the sin first. Then they say, oh, huh? you are also paralyzed. <laughs> Isaiah said, the hand of the Lord is not too short to save. His ears is not deaf that he cannot hear. But your sin has separated between you and your God. 
and your iniquity has hidden his face so that he will not hear. The hand of the Lord is not too short to save. Sometimes the problem is sin. So I say, heal me, heal me. God say, I can't. The thing I see here is sin. So I say, heal me, heal me. Wrong number. The number you are calling does not exist for this purpose. So Jesus said, your sins are forgiven thee. And even the, the Bible says, but there were certain scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man thus speak blasphemy? Who can forgive sin? Sins, but God only. This is one of those passages where Jesus Christ proves that he is God. Because every now and again you hear some people say, where did Jesus say I am God? Where did he say I am God? This is one of the places where Jesus said, I am God. Because he was speaking into a context. And what he was trying to demonstrate to that context is what they got the message. When he said, your sins are forgiven you. Why? This is blasphemy. Because only God can forgive sins. Who can forgive sin except God only? So Jesus picked those words from their hearts. And then he said unto them, why reason these things in your heart? Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy? Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, and take up your bed, and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And immediately, let me hear you say immediately. 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 All it takes is the word of his mouth. And immediately. So when they were say, how is it that this man is saying, your sins are forgiven? This is blasphemous. Jesus picked it from their heart. And he said, why are you reasoning these things in your heart? Which one is easier to say? Easier to say. Not easier to do. Easier to say. Which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven or to say Rise up, take up your bed, and walk. So he now says, so that you will know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Because when I say your sins are forgiven, there is no physical evidence that will enable you to believe and to know that what I have said has happened. So it's very easy for you to sit down there and say, talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. It's easier to say your sins are forgiven. <laughs> there, is, there is no way to verify it. It's harder to say, rise up, take up your bed, and go thy way to your house. Because that is verifiable. So Jesus was saying, I have said the one that you may not be able to verify. So now I'm going to say the one that you can verify. So that when it happens, you will know that the other one also happened. It's just that you don't have the tools to investigate the realm in which it was perfected. So that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said unto the sick of the palsy, he said to him, Arise, take up your bed, go your way into your house. And the Bible says, and immediately. What happened immediately? He arose, took up the bed. He carried his carrier, took up the bed. And went forth before them all, in so much that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. We've seen God do different things. This type. We've not seen this type before. The reason I love this, the ending of this story, is the way the man left. Do you realize that the man didn't need the open roof? to go back. You realize? The Bible says he took up his bed and he went forth before them all. The people that were saying, no road, no road. There's no way. Nobody sent anybody. If you wanted to be healed, why didn't you come on time? They did that because of the man's condition. When the man was healed, 
and his bed had turned into a weapon. Uh, do you want to stand there? No, let, let, are you still standing there? Who's all, who's all, who's all? Something will happen to you tonight that will enable you to become a carrier. The places where you struggled, you will have access. You will have the right of way. The things that stood in hostility to resist you, as soon as they see you, they will make a way. Because you would have encountered the one that dwells in the midst of fire. The Bible said he went forth before them all. That means in their presence, all of them were still watching when he went. And I also like that. I also want to say that that also means, because it also means it practically, that he went before them. Even though they came before him, he went before them. Are you with me? <laughs> They, they were there. He came from home. He came and collected. They were still there. And he left. He went before them. So you can start today. There, this thing, there is overtaking in this matter. It's allowed. Are you with me? O overtaking is allowed in this matter. Say me that just met God recently. It, it changes nothing. It changes nothing. You can come as one born out of due season. And you might say, end up saying, even though I'm the least, I labored more than they all. It's grace. It's grace. And the yieldedness of the individual to that grace that is made available. He went forth before them all. Tonight, we're going to beseech the heavens. Have you heard God tonight? Did you hear God tonight? Did you hear God tonight? We are going to beseech the heavens. Following the sequence of the things we have read. Knowing at the back of your mind that the reason Jesus will heal tonight is because he's a compassionate God. But then to realize that it, as much as God intends to heal, very critical tonight is that God wants to bridge the gap. Let me hear you say bridge the gap. Let me hear you say bridge the gap. Yes. God, God doesn't want to have long distance relationship with any of us. He wants to bridge the gap. That you will be able to wake up every moment at any point in time. That you, you, you can just... Father, I thank you because you hear me always. That's one of the things that... One of the beautiful things every time I read the Gospels... It is, it is how that Jesus Christ is, he, this oneness that he maintains with the Father. You know, there are things that, in fact, there are still things that I have, I'm still beseeching God for. There are certain things that when it happens, I say, give me some time. Give me some time. Give me some time. Let me pray about it. Let me seek the face of the Lord. There are some times that people come with certain issues and I say to them, meet me on Tuesday after Ignite. It's not just because I don't have time. It's because I'm looking for a window in the spirit. Are you with me? It, but the, the thing where I still they beg Jesus, now that kind of thing where he gets. get. It, 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 Jesus was just going somewhere to go and do something. Say, ah, is that a dead body? He says, Stop. woman, weep not. Uh -uh. I say, just like that. He says, son, I say to you, arise. Suddenly, this man's situation was not captured in past tense. They say, he that was dead. I say, eh? he's no more dead. <laughs> he, say, no. he was dead. He that was dead, he sat up. Jesus took him, handed him over to his mother and continued his journey. Hey, 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 hey. Every one of us has a need to bridge the gap. I just want to be where you are. Dwelling daily in your presence. 
I don't want to worship from afar. Draw me to where you are. I want to be where you are. Dwelling in your presence. Feasting at your table. Surrounded by your glory. In your presence. That's where I always, always want to be. So that that thing we say when we end meeting. Thou prepares the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, God's goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord, not when I die, forever. Jesus Christ didn't need to say, you know, there was no... He lived... The way he, Jesus, I don't know how to say it. He, he, that world and this world was one for Jesus. You know, some of us, if it's close to where we are going to preach, we don't want anybody to talk to us anyhow. Because <laughs> there's, a way, there's a way that you want to keep your spirit. Hello? There's a way you want to keep your spirit. Those one hour there about or something, for some person it's more. Before you go and preach. If you're a married man, you, you just beg God and beg your wife. So you say, I'm going to preach this evening. Can we, can we have this conversation tomorrow? Um, I, I apologize in advance. In, in case they didn't want to say something that I did wrong, forgive me. But can we talk about it when I'm done? Then very soon, they will not say to. I, I, let it not be that I'm the one who is uh, stopping the work of God. So go and preach first. <laughs> go and preach first. <laughs> For Jesus, those two worlds, they were one. I don't think there's anybody here tonight that will not have a prayer to pray. Even if it's as simple as nearer, my Lord, to thee. Nearer to thee. There is a vagabond spirit out there that tells you not to pray that kind of prayer. A vagabond spirit. That says a Christian cannot be say, cannot be say, Lord, bring me nearer, bring me nearer. That, hey, what is, hey, that, that is actually how you know that they don't know God. That's how you know they don't know God. A man who knows God, you know, you know that there are degrees. Is a gradient in the Holy Ghost. A gradient. That is why they sin with impunity because they don't know God. But your heart was made for Him. Your heart was made for Him. And tonight I pray that you will be able to recover the innocence, the purity of that heart. So that in all tenderness, you will be able to tell when a gap is beginning to appear and when it is widening. Between you and the Lord. And no matter how close you are, you can be closer still. Yes. You can be closer still. Bow your heads. Bow your heads. Bow your heads. They came nigh. They came. But they could not come nigh. That's the crux of the matter. Nigh. Near. 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 I know you have come. I know you came. But there is coming and there is coming. Leme bobona teme mo baba. Bobo, baba, bobo. 
Baba Bobo, Baba Bobo, Baba Bobo, Baba Bobo. Hey, baby, hey, baby, hey, baby, hey, baby, hey, baby, hey, baby. I can't help you in this matter. This is a prayer that you pray out of burden. It's a prayer that you pray out of understanding. I can't help you. I don't intend to motivate you. I want you to transact from the native status of your heart this moment. The urgency, the intensity with which you prosecute this is a testimony of the value that you place on the subject matter. Moi my mana hamo Momo Mama 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 Amy Mama Amy Mama Mama Hey, me, my mama. Me, my mama, my mama. Yeah, more, 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 yeah, more. My tosama. I've been a tenant no more, baby, ma. Baba mama mo mama me 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 mama ma I bring my heart before you again tonight Closer closer nearer 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 my lord to thee nearer my lord to thee nearer my lord to thee Enoch walked with God and was not because the Lord took him. Wow. Such intimacy. I be mana no no more. I. Alleluion. God most high. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Israel. Alleluion. I monana to sa semene semene ni na 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 mo e mana tamo e mana tamo iba manena o manena no i monana ni i monana ni ni na God must I I am Jesus Christ Hallelujah Israel Hallelujah God must I Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Help me to preach the gap. Help me to preach the gap. Nearer, 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 nearer. Nearer, 
nearer my Lord to thee nearer my Lord to thee Leading. You want that far from God. You can say to him, Here am I. You once knew the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, but you lost it. The songwriter says, I've wandered far away from God, but now I'm coming home. Just as I am without one plea, but that your blood was shed for me, and that you bid me come, O oh, Lamb of God, I come. O oh, Lamb of God, I come. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus healed. Jesus forgave. Different people under the sound of my voice have different kinds of gaps between them and the Lord. Maybe under the sound of my voice you came because somebody invited you. You once knew the motions of the spirit, 
You lost it. Something happened. You lost it. And you're wondering, can it ever be like that again? Tonight I need you to know that Jesus is saying to you, let's begin again. Let's begin again. Just as I am without one plea, but that your blood was shed for me, and that thou bid me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. One more time. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed, was shed for me, and that thou bid me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. Yes, I come, but thou bids me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come, one more time, but that thou bids me Come to me, O Lamb of God, I come, Lord, I come. Everyone can respond to that call tonight, everybody, from wherever you are, you can respond to that call. If you're under the sound of my voice, you are backsliding. Are you under the sound of my voice? You never quite, you never quite gave your life to Jesus. Because you can be in church and not be in Christ. You can die in church and go to hell. That's the story of Ananias and Sapphira. They died in church, but they woke up in hell. I just say we don't know their last moment but they died in church they died as liars you can die in church and go to hell we are here this evening you've heard the word of the Lord and you've heard God pulling you in your heart drawing you to himself I want you to respond just like we said in that song just like we said in that song but that thou bids me come to you, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. You want to say, Lamb of God, I come. I want to pray for you before I pray for the sick. That's the sequence of our story. He forgave the sin. And then he healed the sickness. In our story, it was the same person. For us here tonight, it might not be the same person. But the point is, Jesus, who heals the sick, also forgives the sinner. And so tonight, you under the sound of my voice, we want to say, Jesus, I've wandered far away. But just as I am, I have no argument, I have no plea, I have no merit. Except that you say I should come. And because you have said I should come, Lamb of God, I come. To you, I come. Forgive my sins. Make me a child of God. Let my name be put in the book of life. That register. So that when the roll will be called up yonder, that I also will be there. If you want me to pray that prayer with you, I want you to lift your hand wherever you are. Inside, outside, and online. That's the one group of people I want to pray for specifically before I pray for the sick. You want this evening to be the evening when you begin?
your walk with Jesus. And remember as we said in our story, doesn't matter how late you come, you can start today. That paralyzed man came very late. But he made rapid progress. And he left before them all. You can begin now. So if you are here, you want to commit your life to Jesus afresh tonight. Just lift your hand above your head. Let me pray for you quickly. Before I pray for the sick. And then get out of your way. Yes, God bless you. God bless every hand that is up. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Inside and outside. Please, if you need to lift that hand up, lift it up. If you need to lift that hand up, lift it up. I come. That's the cry tonight. Oh, Lamb of God, I come. I come. Oh, Lamb of God, I come. your hand up above your head if your hand is up I want you to place it on your chest on your chest on your chest that's how we make a pledge put that hand on your chest put that hand on your chest and if you don't mind with your hand on your chest I just want you to stand where you are where you are where you are just stand there where you are stand please stand please where you are just stand there with your hand on your chest. I want you to say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, just as I am, I have no plea. I have no excuse. I have no argument. Except that your blood was shed for me. And that you have said I should come. Therefore, O Lamb of God, here am I. I come. I come. I come to you, Jesus, just as I am. Have mercy on me. Forgive my sins. Have mercy on me. Forgive my past. Have mercy on me. Forgive my iniquities and my transgressions. Make me a new person. Please, Jesus, let's begin again. Let's begin again. Let's begin again. Let's begin again. Let your grace overwhelm my heart and let your spirit empower my life. Lead me by your spirit on the path of righteousness and take me to heaven when my days on earth are over and they are done. Thank you, Father, for such love. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your power. This day, I declare by the mercies of God, I am a child of God. I have decided I'll follow Jesus from now till the end of time. No going back, no turning back, no sliding back, no looking back. Forward ever, backward never. So let it be. So let it be established. I receive grace to walk the walk. I receive grace to run my race. I receive grace to finish well. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. In of God, I come. I come. But that thou bids me come to you, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. This moment I want to pray for the sick. 
I want to pray for the sick. Very quickly, I want to pray for the sick. They come. And eventually they came nigh. When they came nigh, he forgave sin and he healed sickness. Now you are online or you are on site. I want everybody at this moment to be in the mood of prayer. Those of you that are standing, I want for you to sit for a moment. I want you to sit for a moment. If we need you, we'll get you because I need to do this once and for all. Right the way you are sat, you need any kind of healing from the Lord. I want you to talk to him in the next 30 seconds. Express your desire, your need of healing to him. 30 seconds. Please pray now. Please pray now. Please pray now. Pray now. 30 seconds. And that thou bids me come to you, O Lamb of God, I've come. I come. 10 seconds. That Thou bids me come to you, O Lamb of God. I come, I come. All right, I want to pray for you now. You are sick in your body. I want you to place your right hand on your head as I pray. I'm going to pray for you in less than one minute. The healing is begun already. Many of you are healed already. I just need to pray so that you have opportunity to be able to consciously trap it. You need healing in your body. I want you to place your right hand on your head. You can also place it on your chest, whichever works for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray in keeping with your word over my brothers and sisters, online, on site, in the hall here and in the overflow. And those that will listen after now, I ask every sickness, every ailment, every disease, right now, that plagues your people because of your compassion, oh Jesus, in your mercy, let your healing power flow. Yes, according to this ordinance, therefore I declare from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, be healed from your infirmities. Yes, from your head, let pain, migraine, headache, let it go. I rebuke blinding spirit, be gone in the name of Jesus. Every form of eye trouble, eye defect, be gone in the name of Jesus. I come against nasal congestion. I come against every trouble in your airways and your windpipes and your lungs. I come against asthma. I command it to be gone. Difficulty with breathing. Go in the name of Jesus. Boil in the nostrils. Dry up in the name of Jesus. I come against every trouble in your mouth, your teeth, your tongue, your gum. I command healing to you in the name of Jesus. Oh, I command wholeness to your spine in the mighty name of Jesus. I rebuke pain in the shoulders. I rebuke pain in your middle back. I rebuke pain in your lower back. Be healed in the name of Jesus. I come against everything that is abnormal in your tummy. Everything that resides within the tummy region. I command no mercy into that region now be healed in the name of Jesus I speak life to your legs I speak life to your bones I speak life to your joints I rebuke arthritis I command arthritis to be gone be gone be gone go in the name of Jesus I come against conditions of the liver I come against conditions in the kidney I come against conditions in your stomach your intestine, large intestine, small intestine, I come against every condition that is domiciled within your tummy region. Now, every abnormal swelling, I come against fibroid, disappeared in the name of Jesus. Dematerialize now in the name of Jesus. I speak wholeness. I speak wholeness. I speak wholeness. Oh, by the power that is in the name of Jesus, be healed. Be healed. 
be healed be healed be healed you are healed you are healed in Jesus mighty name we have prayed do you have a better amen than that yeah. hallelujah it's done say thank you Jesus all right, now you can open your eyes. You can look at me. I want everybody to stand. Everybody stand. We are done. Everybody stand. Stand to your feet. Very important. Now, if you came to this place with a sickness, with an ailment, bring it down. You came here with a sickness, with an ailment. I want you to take the next 10 seconds to run a check. I want you to check it out and let me know if something changed in your body. 10 seconds. I want to be out of your way in the next three minutes. So if you couldn't read without your glasses or you couldn't bend or, you, you know, just whatever. If there was a pain somewhere and there's a way you felt it or you can feel it, I just want you to do whatever you can do in order to be able to check if your circumstance has changed. And you have 10 seconds. That's why I asked you to stand so that while you are standing, it won't look awkward if you are trying to stretch your leg or bend your back. You know, or take your Bible and read whatever you need to do. Please, 10 seconds, do it now. 10, 9, run a check inside, outside, online. Run a check 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Run a check 3, 2, 1, 0. Time up. All right, so something changed, something is different. Let me see your hand, your right hand above your head. Let me see your right hand above your head. Please run a check. Run a check. Run a check. Yeah, I can see the hand. Yes. I can see the hand. Run a check. Run a check. Run a check. Very quick. Very quickly. Very quickly. Very quickly. You can keep checking. If you're expecting the healing, don't be moping. Just continue checking. Something changed in your body. Alright, come. Come. Come quickly. Inside, outside. If something changed, come. Lift your hand up. And then just find your way to me very quickly, very quickly, very, very quickly, very, very quickly. Let the healing power of Jesus, the healing power of Jesus is still at work in this place. There is an eye, there is an eye that Jesus normalizes. There is an eye. If, if, you, are not, if you are not so in love with your medicated glasses, Jesus can take them away this evening. And so, I want you to keep checking. I want you to keep checking. Please, keep checking. Keep checking. Something changed, just walk out here very quickly. I want to take just three testimonies. But I need to see everyone that Jesus touched. Now, the way we do this thing is, if Jesus has done something, say something. Huh? And if nothing has happened, say nothing. It's as simple as that. We don't need artificial encouragement. Is that okay? But at the same time, if Jesus has done something, don't say nothing. If he's done something, say something. And it's, this evening is just as simple as lift your hand and walk out here. Now, I'm going to take this testimony, that testimony. While that is happening, I want you to try and do something you couldn't do. Just sit down for a minute. But keep running a check. And by the time I'm done taking this testimony, I would come back to you. Yes, quickly talk to me. So yes. he, for him, um, he had um, a severe headache. He had a headache okay. um, for four days, but okay. now the headache is gone. Okay. He also had um, joint pains. Joint pains. Yeah, his waist and all that. He couldn't twist it. He couldn't in his joint, so it was very severe. And then How long have you had the joint pain? Four days. Okay, so he came with a headache and all that. Yes, all sir. right, so what changed now? What? I can twist the waist now. You can twist the waist now? Yes, sir. What of the headache? <laughs> The head is gone. It's gone. The headache is gone. Yes, all sir. right, all right. The headache is gone, and the pain around the waist is gone. You say I can twist the waist now. Yes. Hallelujah. All right. So talk to me. What happened to that young man? So for him, it was his eyes. His eyes. He came here with glasses. He couldn't read the screen. Okay. Before he has been that has happened for like one year. Oh wow. But right now he can read the screen. You came with glasses. He came with the glasses. Where's the glasses? Oh, he's on he your seat. seat. Okay. Oh, that's the glass. Yeah, I want to be sure that uh, it's called evidence. You need to admit the glasses into evidence. All right. So, before, what couldn't you read? The screen. 
Like the screen, you couldn't read the screen. Yes, sir. So can you read it now? Yes, he used them all. The word counts, Mr. Tiflo Sunday. Okay, the guy just reading at random. <laughs> Come on, somebody give Jesus praise. This he he actually came here with glasses. You know, you know, even when they came, I was still praying for somebody with eye problem. Because that was something I sensed very strongly. And I, because I didn't see any of them with glasses, that was why I still, you remember the last thing I said was about the eyes. Because I saw, in fact, I mentioned that if you have glasses and you are not so attached to it, Jesus can take them away. Because I felt the anointing to heal eyes very strongly as we prayed. If you have eye problem, I want you to run another check. If you have eye problem, run another check now. Online and on site, run another check now. Now, whatever ailment you had in your body, I want you to run another check now. Do something you could not do before. It's very simple. If something happened, say something. If nothing happened, say nothing. This is very practical. No, don't say, let me just say so that. No, 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 no. Don't say it by faith. All right, so now, um, inside and outside, online, 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 online. If you have a testimony online, please put it in the comment section. All right, there are two more persons that I expect to see out here this evening. So something changed. Can I, can I see your hand? You don't even need to leave the hand. Just stand up and walk out here very quickly. Run a check, confirm, and then come. Run a check, confirm, and come. If you are out there in the overflow, if you are in here in the hall, run a check means do something you couldn't do before. The symptom of the sickness, what it prevented you from doing, try to do it again and then let me know if a difference happens. If, if it's different, just stand up and come very quickly. Jesus, I ask for a harvest of confirmation. Let confirmation drop in the bodies of your people now. Mm -hmm. Receive confirmation now in your body in the name of Jesus Christ. Did you say amen? amen. All right, so run the check and come. All right, two of you come. 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 I need to pray for you. Your healing is permanent in the mighty name of Jesus. Your healing is permanent in the mighty name of Jesus. Your eyes, they see. Your eyes, they see. Your eyes, they will carry you into old age. In Jesus' mighty name. It's established. It's established. In Jesus' name. You can go to your seat. Please clap for the Lord. Clap for the Lord. All right, talk to me. What happened there? Okay, so for him, he had acute migraine. Migraine, yes. Yeah, and it's been disturbing him for um, since Saturday morning. Since Saturday. Yeah, but um, now when you made the, fact, the declaration you just made, mm -hmm. then he, he doesn't no longer okay. have to use it. Just, just now. Uh, the yes. guy said, just. <laughs> so just now. The migraine is gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Yes, sir. All right. What's wrong with everybody in this hall? Are you jealous? <laughs> Jesus just healed somebody. All right, there at least has to be a second person. So for him, oh, okay, this is a second person. Yeah, yeah. All right, because I, I knew that at least there were two more people. So All for right. him, he said he had um, acute cough. Cough. Uh, you yes. Were coughing. Yes. That even while he came here, he was still um, um, coughing. So, but that right. now he was trying to check. That's why he didn't come out earlier. But that he's healed now, and he's gone. Come on, somebody give Jesus praise. Come, 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 come. We rebuke the cough and we declare that it will not return. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus has set you free. That infirmity is gone and it will not come back again. You are made whole. So let it be. In Jesus' mighty name. That's all the amen you have. All right. Is there any testimony online? Any testimony online? Facebook, YouTube, MixLR. If you have a testimony, please put it in the comment section. I want you to stand to your feet for a moment. Stand to your feet. I want you to lift up your right hand. 
I wanted to say thank you, Jesus. All right. Give him thanks in 20 seconds. Just say thank you, Jesus. And take it off from there. Lord, we thank you for your healing power. We thank you for the grace. Oh, thank you for the headache, the migraine. Thank you for the stomach trouble, the cough. Thank you for the eye trouble. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for those that we confirm when they leave, for those that we confirm by morning tomorrow. Thank you for everything you have done. Thank you for restoration. Thank you, Jesus, for revival. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you for those that you have brought to yourself. Thank you for gaps that have been breached tonight. Lord, tonight we give you praise. And I declare in that spirit that whatever you have done tonight will not be undone. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. I declare over you that your hand shall be lifted perpetually in victory. In the spirit your head will not be bowed. In the mighty name of Jesus. You will go from strength to strength. From victory to victory. Many of you will still wake up tomorrow morning with testimonies. Oh, you will wake up tomorrow with healing testimonies. You will wake up Monday with healing testimonies. And some others will still wake up on Tuesday with healing testimonies. It will continue until Tuesday. Every day there will be testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't know what it is. Somebody having a trouble around your menstrual period. I don't know what that trouble is, but it ends tonight. Amen. I just heard the word of the Lord. It comes to an end tonight. Amen. And what I heard in the spirit is stop. Stop. It ends tonight. So it is decreed. So now it is established. You are blessed in your spirit. You are blessed in your soul. You are blessed in your body. You are made whole. Oh, times of refreshing, they come upon you. Your fellowship with the Lord is reignited. You will enjoy God. You will know the fellowship of the Spirit. And you will go from sweetness to sweetness. Your path, like the path of the just, shines brighter and brighter. You are blessed. 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 In Jesus mighty name. Do you have a better amen than that? God bless you. God bless you.